How would you know if these gig app companies are ever ripping you off? Well, I can tell you the answer to that, and then you can know if companies like Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Instacart are cheating you. I am so happy that you're here and eager to learn. Hello and welcome. My name is Russ, and I've been doing food delivery part-time going on six years now, so I've got a wealth of knowledge that I love sharing with you. I do this to help you increase your earnings, also increase your ratings so that you are a more valuable driver with each of these companies. And then finally, how to protect yourself with that ever looming threat of deactivation. No, of course not. It's not all negative experience doing gig work, but you would do well to heed the advice of other people that have vast experience as well on YouTube. And coming to mind would be Daryl from Daryl Delivers. He primarily does Instacart. Levi from Tip You in the App, Rideshare, and also John from Ride Up State, also Rideshare and Food Delivery. Ripping off and cheating is known as deceiving and tricking. I think any driver out there that has experience with the food delivery apps, you know that they try to deceive you. I think the shopping apps are a little bit more upfront. But if we look at our pay, that's how we can tell if we're being truly cheated or not. Have you ever considered how we really form our opinions based on our feelings and our memory of how things were? Well, have your feelings and your memory ever failed you yet? I can say assuredly, facts do not fail you. You can analyze facts and then test your theories against them to see if they hold up to the facts or not. So in light of that, I've analyzed my pay on Instacart, Grubhub, and Uber Eats, and I'm here to share my findings with you. You can take the information that I'm sharing with you, look at your own pay, and then you are gonna know if you are being cheated as well. So let's start off with Instacart. What is that if you're new? Instacart is where you as the shopper are going out and buying groceries and delivering them to the customer. I looked at my pay from 2022, 2023, and up till now after the first quarter of 2024. I did not include 2021 for good reason. That was right during COVID. Everybody was handing over so much money for the drivers to shop their orders. So I excluded that information. I was very excited just noticing that I make 48% of my money in tips when you just include the base pay. Now, when you add in Prop 22, that percentage drops down to 38% of my money comes from tips. For Prop 22 pay, I make 34% of my total income because of Prop 22. When accounting for my total pay on Instacart, I'm making $35 an hour, drops down to $27.81 when you exclude the Prop 22 money. And then it drops even further, $14.37 per hour if you just say no customer tips. Now I do want to call out, I do make more from Prop 22 doing shopping orders. Think about it, it's because we're paid more for our time shopping for groceries takes much longer than just going in a restaurant and grabbing a food order. To make these kind of earnings, I am taking the right kind of orders. Have you followed Daryl Delivers yet? You probably should. He's got great advice on how to pick those really good batches. I will say, if you just take every offer that Instacart gives you, you're going to go out of business sooner than later. So next, we're going to move right into food delivery, but before I get into some details, Here's a simple thing to remember. I have found through experience that I can do three food delivery orders per hour. So if you go back, look through your average pay across all the different apps for food delivery, multiply that times three, and that's gonna give you an idea of how much you will make per hour. In my case, I'm roughly making $30 an hour before expenses, and this is before expenses for you as well. Now, we're ready to look at Grubhub. I took my data from 2022, 23, and then through this first quarter in 2024. As you may or may not know, Grubhub is primarily designed around food delivery from restaurants. Next, they also do have a small shop and pay function, and even less common would be catering orders. Overall, I make 26% of my total money in tips. Next, for Prop 22, that's 8% of my total pay. In my market, looking at all my orders, I make an average of $10.80. 
Now, when you take away tips, let's say I get a bunch of no tip orders, that drops down to $8.42 per order. And I do want to also mention, I typically do take every order from Grubhub. Finally, let's look at Uber Eats pay. Now, I've been closely tracking my earnings with them ever since 2023, of course, through now, because I was doing an experiment to take every single order and get my acceptance rate up to 100%. You can watch previous videos that'll give you updates on that progress, but I do want to share with you, I make 49% of all my earnings on Uber Eats just from the base pay. I make 19% of my total pay from Prop 22. I make an average of 32% of my pay from tips. Now just looking at base pay, I make an average per order of $6.32, only base pay. Now when you throw in Prop 22, that boosts my average up to $8.75 per order. And then finally, when you add in total pay including tips, that goes up to $12.86 per order. So in general, between Grubhub and Uber Eats, that's why I say about three an hour, $10 an hour, $30 an hour before expenses. Overall, I think grocery shopping does pay the most reliable pay at $14 an hour, considering no customer tips whatsoever. Plus, in general, mileage is a little bit less doing shopping compared to food delivery. And this makes sense. Most people cook their meals at home. Now, food deliveries, on the other hand, go to where people are ready to eat. For a majority of our lives, we work. And so many of these lunchtime orders go to businesses for the customers to eat. They're quite busy, and they look forward with excitement of their favorite food, so they're not really considering the distance away because they're at work, they're busy, and that's why they pay you as the driver to go get their order from their favorite restaurant. This means miles are really going to rack up on your vehicle much more from food delivery than grocery shopping. And yes, I have generally found that breakfast and dinner mostly go to people's homes, but they also go to their businesses sometimes. So this is not the case, again, for grocery shopping because people usually want their groceries from the closest location direct to their home so they can get it right in the fridge. So overall, for my Instacart pay, that showed I was getting almost $4 per mile all the way down, if you just use base pay, to roughly $1.60 per mile. And I will say that times are good when you're doing food delivery if you can get it $1.50 per mile. But over time, I found my average does creep down more towards a dollar. So this is something to consider. Miles on your vehicle are really going to rack up much more when you're doing food delivery. I do realize that this pay data, it is of limited value because just because we know how much we could make, there are many factors that play into how much you will make. Order availability is a key one. We cannot make orders magically appear out of the air. We have to wait for those customers. So to get around this, this is why I multi-app. I'm on many apps, so whatever comes in, if it meets my criteria to make a good hourly wage, as Daryl Delivers always pushes, and rightly so, you want to only pick orders that are going to help you meet your goals. And so if that's $30 per hour, you know that you need to only take orders that are going to build towards that. Now, I am guilty of this too. When it's really slow and I get desperate because I want to earn some money, I do lower my criteria and I cave into those apps and I'll generally take orders that I wouldn't and therefore I am going to make less. But I console myself that, hey, at least I'm making some money. But I also always realize I'm putting a lot of miles on my car and so if I have to to meet my goals, then fine. But if you have the choice, I would say do shopping and things like that. That way you're not running up so many miles on your car. In light of all this information, helping you to determine if you're being paid fairly or not, I want you to consider current world events, the uncertainty of the times, inflation, really high prices. Have you ever wondered which of these apps is worth pursuing? Well, I have, and I'll share that app with you in the next video. So I'll see you there.